Hello and welcome to another Reroll tutorial video. Now today we are going to have a very special tutorial video because rather than talking about the Reroll robot, well, we are still going to talk about the robot, but the main point of this video is that in May 2015, we are going to have a very special competition. So this is the playing field or the track for the challenge. So the goal of the challenge for the challenge is very simple. That is, you have to make your robot exit the track. So let's say in the picture here, we can see that there are three exits. A and B on either ends of the track and exit C in the center of the track. So the shape of the track is something like a T junction, a T shape. So your robot has to start at either ends A and B. You cannot start at C. So let's say you start at A, you can exit from either B or C and if you start at B, you can exit through either A or C. So how well you do in this competition is very simple. So <coughs> the winner is the team that has the robot that finishes the that finishes the track fastest. So if your robot takes the shortest time to exit the track, then your team wins. And that's all for the track or the play field. So I think in order to show you how to play on the play field, I mean how to demo it, I think I'll build a very simple robot that's this one. So from here onwards, we'll be using this robot to talk about how to to go into detail on how to complete the play field and all, all about everything about the rules. So this is a very simple robot. So because since for this video we are going to focus more on the competition, so here we have a very simple robot. It doesn't really crawl and it's definitely not the best option for you to use during the competition because as always you can always design your own robot, maybe you can make a faster robot or use the older models but remember it's best to make your own modifications or use your very own unique robot so here I only have a I only have an example robot you don't have to use this for the competition but I'm going to use this to show you how to play the play field okay so now let's go and build this robot so now we're going to start to build the robot as always we are going to start with the controller so flip to the bottom so it, as you just saw the robot has four limbs so we're going to use four adapter joints here. So slide in one, then put in three double spacers, and then follow it with an adapter joint. So we want the limbs to separate as far as possible. Okay, so now with this, the limbs will be at both ends of the slots. So we'll repeat this with the other slot. We we'll slide in the adapter joint. Always remember to allow the slot of the adapter joint face outwards so that later it will be easier to assemble the limbs or any other parts of the robot okay now flip to one side of the, of the controller here we will slide in an adapter joint this is for the sensor so this design is for only is for to make sure that the sensor can sense the wall at the side so after the adapter joint follow it with two double spacers and one single spacer so I'm going to explain a little bit here so the other joint is here so that the ultrasonic will be facing this way. So it will be moving like this. So when it's moving, you keep on checking to the left of it to check if there's a wall. So once it passes through the wall, the ultrasonic will sense that there's nothing here and then it will be able to move to the left. Okay, so that's it for the controller. We'll leave it here for a while. To start with the limbs, we'll take two servos and then one long U-joint and one normal U-joint. So assemble the servos onto the U-joints. So it's always the same way, slide in the rotatable connect and then slide the whole servo into the U-joint. Repeat it with the long U-joint. Okay. So now, slide in interconnects on the servos. And then, move it like this first. So connect the short U, the normal U-joint with the servo on top of the long U-joint with the servo. And make sure it's connected like this. Like this, so you move something like this, connect it like this, and then the bottom connect in a slim wheel, and then we are done with the limb. So this will be connected to the body, so you can move like this, and then this will act something like an elbow of the limb. Okay, now repeat this for the other three limbs. So now that all four limbs are done, we will connect them to the controller. So. I said before, it will be connected to the bottom of the body. So, connect it in like this. The first one. Second one. Of 
course, remember to make sure that the orientation is correct because sometimes if it's incorrect, the wires will be tangled up or stuck when the limbs move around because the U-joint might tangle itself up with the wires. So once it's in, it will be something like this. Oops, sorry. Once it's in, it will be something like this. Okay, so this will be the body of the robot. So the main moving part is complete. So now we only need to connect the sensors. So we'll be using the ultrasonic this time because we won't be using the head module because the head module is quite large. And then this time we only need it to accomplish the mission. So it's more important. So I think the function is more important than the looks. So we'll be using the ultrasonic. So connect in the interconnect on this side of the servo, and then one interconnect on the op on the neighboring side. So it's something at 90 degrees. Okay, now slot the ultrasonic in, and then slide into the adapter joint at the end like this. Okay, so as you can see, the ultrasonic is only facing this way. So this robot can only function when exit C is on this side of the robot. So this is actually a limitation of the robot, but right now we are building a robot to complete the mission. So since it actually fulfills the criteria, so that's it for now. So remember that if you want your robot to exit, to move in the opposite direction and then exit this way, remember that your autosonic sensor needs to be changed to this direction. Now that we're done with your robot, you make sure that you remember to plug in the wires and then also set the servo limits. So the limit for this limb, for this part is something like this. So we go all the way down 90 degrees and then all the way here. So it's a 90 degrees, 90 degrees freedom. And then for here, make sure it goes from here, this end, down to around here. You don't want it to go all the way down because then it will collide with the other, the other servo, the other limb. Okay, so now I'll just show you the example of how it will move. So after this, after this video ends, I'd like you to go home and try uh, how to make it move. So as you can see, this is going to be a very quirky type of movement. Something like this. So it's not actually crawling because you can see the legs are not simultaneous. They're not moving in a way that they're like legs. So it's something like limping or swimming. It's like the frog style swimming. <laughs> so as I said, this isn't the best option option for the for the competition. It's just something. It's more of a quirky robot. You can try. So and in the next video, I'll show you how to move using the teach mode, and then we also talk about the strategies of the competition in more detail. And that's the end of the video. Thank you.